All right, welcome back, everybody. Buckle up, because over the next few episodes, I'm going to show you some things that are probably a little more advanced than where we currently are in our learning, but I'm still going to do it because I think you're ready. So we're going to talk more about request types. We will enhance our router to support these request types. You will learn about service containers, and we'll even build our own service container. So all of this kind of fancy, confusing terminology in three episodes is going to make perfect sense to you. So why don't we get going? All right, so I will bring up PHP Storm. And yeah, before we make any sweeping code changes here, we first need to know the why. Because remember, the why drives the refactor, or at least it should drive the refactor. Here's another way of thinking of it. Uh, there needs to be some kind of pain point that leads you down a particular path in a particular refactor. And I'm going to show you that in this video. So for example, if I go into Firefox and I click on our notes section, we still don't have a way to delete a note. So yeah, maybe right here, if I click on it, here's the body of the note. And yeah, maybe right below it, there should be a button to delete the note. OK, so let's go down to our views where we show a note. And yeah, right here below the body, we want some kind of action for deleting the current note. OK, so if I come back and refresh, it's totally unstyled, but this is basically what I mean. OK, so now pause if you need to. I want you to answer the question, is it appropriate to use an anchor tag for this sort of request? OK, pause if you need to and really think about it. And the answer is no. OK, so remember a number of episodes when we talked about idempotency, a, a very confusing term. It's even hard to say. And you'll remember that what that means is no matter how many times I make a particular request, it's not going to change anything, right? So if I, if I make a request to view the home page, it's always going to show me the home page. Compare that to a request to delete a note or to add a product or to update a product. Those things are not idempotent. And as such, we should probably not use a standard get request, which is what a, a anchor tag will do for us. OK, so instead, we will store this within a form. And then I will add a submit button that says delete. And yeah, if you want, we will make it small and red. OK, also, we should have just a little margin above this form. Come back, give it a refresh. And yeah, that's good enough for now. OK, so now when I click on this, well, of course, by default, it's going to submit a GET request to the current page. So we could change this to a POST request. And if I come back, we try it again. And yeah, the page just effectively reloads, even though we did submit a POST request. And that's because, well, think about it. Let's have a look at our routes section. And yeah, right here is our current URI. So we now submit a POST request. That loads the show controller. And this just displays the note. So, so there's no change. In other words, um, when we submit a GET request versus a POST request to this specific controller. But yeah, if you want, we could do it right here. I could die and dump the current server uh, super global. And if I come back and I now submit it, sure enough, we can see that we are submitting a POST request to this page. OK. So yeah, I guess once again, we could do this weird check where we say, all right, well, if the request uh, method, and again, I'm just grabbing that right here. That's the name of the item. If that equals post, then, well, we're just going to assume that's a request to delete uh, the, the note. But again, maybe it could be a request to update the note. So this is where you really have to think about the structure of your URIs. So another option, uh, if I were to come back to my round section, you might think, well, let's use a completely different URI. So for example, we might say, uh, excuse me, note slash delete should take us to a different controller. And yeah, I guess you could do it if you want. And in fact, it's actually a really common approach, but I don't really love it. And worse, if I teach you this approach in a handful of episodes, I'm just going to unteach you. So instead, I really do want to stick with a common restful uh, convention here. And that convention says, if you want to delete a particular note, then you should submit a delete request to that specific note endpoint. But now we have more problems, lots of problems here. As it turns out, current browsers and, and, and forms do not support request types that are not get or post. 
So if I want to submit a delete request or a put or a patch request, usually for updating a resource, well, forms don't really understand that. So now, if that's the case, and we still want to use these request types, our application has to be updated to support it. And, and we need to provide some kind of hint to our application to say, okay, well, the form doesn't some more, uh, I'm sorry, the form doesn't support submitting a delete request, but that's really what I want. All right, so we, we got to figure out how to communicate that uh, as part of our application. So here's what we'll do for now. If we come back into notes slash show, I'm just going to stick with a simple post request. And then in the next, uh, in the coming episodes, I'm going to show you how we can rewrite things to, to make it a little more, I don't know, a, a little more seamless. Okay, so let's come back into notes slash show. And yeah, it sounds like this is what we have to do at the moment. We check, well, if you submitted the page, then we want to take this pathway. Otherwise, we're going to take the pathway uh, that you see right here. Give it a reformat. Notice how already it just feels gross. The more if-else statements you add, the the more complexity that you add as well. And then if, if, if within one if statement you add another if statement, very quickly, uh, things can go off the rails and, and you'll, you will encounter this over and over in your own projects. Okay. But yeah, we'll just say form was submitted, delete the current, uh, note. Okay. So how could we do that? Well, we just need to write a query. So I could say DB query and let's write a delete SQL query, delete from notes where the ID equals an ID that should be passed through the form or when we submit the form. But at the moment, you can see we're not actually submitting anything uh, as part of the post request. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's add an input that's actually hidden because I don't want the user to see it. Or in other words, if I keep it like this uh, and then we set the value equal to the ID of the current note. So I could do something like this, note uh, ID. Okay, so if we come back to Firefox and give this a reload, yeah, sure enough, we now have the ID of the note, which is 17, and that will be submitted uh, when we when we press this button here. But I don't. Uh, there's no reason to show this input to the end user. So instead, I'm going to create an input with a type of hidden. That way, it exists and it will be included along with the post request, but the user doesn't have to see it. Okay, let's prove it. Let's go back into our controller here and say, well, before we do anything, let's die and dump the post uh, super global, and then we'll give this a shot. So refresh, and I will delete it. And that didn't work. What did I do wrong here? <laughs> See, I, I talk a big game, and then things don't even work. Um, oh yeah, of course, we have to add a name for this input. So we'll say ID. Okay, and I, I showed you this a number of episodes ago. If you don't include the name, it will not be included as part of the post request. All right, one more time. Sorry about that. But sure enough, we are sending it through. Okay, great. So now, yeah, right, come back here, uncomment this, and we could say delete from notes where the ID equals the ID of the note that was included along with the post request. But now remember, we need proper authorization. Otherwise, anyone could make this request. Even if I don't have an account, if I knew that you had this this security concern, I could manually make this request and start deleting the notes of all of the users in your system. And I could even create a loop where I just go through every single ID and I try to delete the note. Um, and, and I'm sure you could do that across lots of uh, small applications where they don't quite know about authorization. So what we'll do is grab all of this here. I'll do a little duplication, but that's okay because we're gonna refactor this in the next episode. Bring this up. And yeah, if you want to delete the note, we first need to, to check the note and look at it and check the user ID who created the note and see, well, is that the same ID as the person who is currently signed in? So yeah, now we check, all right, track down the note that matches this ID. And then we're going to look at the note that was returned from the database and we'll check, well, is that user ID the same as the current user ID? And remember, right now we're hard coding that ID because we haven't yet reviewed uh, authentication. But in the next section, I think we will take a look at that and everything's just going to work seamlessly. Okay, cool. So assuming that we get beyond this point, then we could move on and delete the, uh, the corresponding note. And I think this should do the trick. 
The final step is, well, where should we go at that point? Well, you've deleted the notes. Maybe we should redirect you to the page that shows all of the notes. And in PHP, this is a little wonky, but we could add little helpers if we want to. In PHP, we're going to say header, and we're going to set the location to uh, slash notes. And then we're all done, so we can exit or die if you prefer. All right, so let's give it a shot. I will come back, give it a refresh. I will delete the notes. And sure enough, it's deleted, and it redirected us back to this page. OK, but now let's come back and change the current user ID to something like 25 or whatever. OK, well, now if the user with an ID of 25 tries to manually submit a request to delete this note, think about what happens. We first track down the note from the database, and that way we can look at the person who created the note, the user ID. And if we check, well, that user ID is 1. And we check, all right, well, is 1 equal to the ID of the current user making the request? Does 1 equal 25? No. So of course, we abort entirely. We don't continue the request. All right, let's give it a shot. Come back to Firefox, delete it. And yeah, you are not authorized uh, to view this page. And if I come back to Table Plus, we haven't deleted anything. Uh, so that seems to be working the way we'd want. OK, but yeah, now I just want you to take a look at the fact that we've created lots of branches here. Now, whenever I visit this page, it's not just the controller for showing a note. It's the controller for uh, destroying a note or deleting a note. Here's a pathway for deleting it. Here's another pathway for, for showing it. And again, for small projects, it just doesn't matter very much because it's still relatively easy to understand. But you just don't want to build applications this way. So in the next episode, we're going to figure out how to submit a form using something like a delete request type or a patch or a put. And to do that, we will need to update our router to support that. So I hope you're excited. We will work on that in the next episode.